Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so uh, I'd like to shift from Lee's presentation on older adults to talk uh, about the impact on younger, low-income persons uh, with two or more uh, chronic health conditions. So um, a Medicare is a Medicaid safety net uh, health plan for uh, persons with chronic illnesses living in New York City. We have just under 8,000 uh, members, all of whom are living with two or more uh, chronic uh, conditions, most notably HIV, behavioral health, hepatitis C, um, and we have a large uh, provider network and were funded uh, and founded by uh, FQHC provider sponsors. Um, two of our health plan members serve on an 11 person board of directors and I'll get into a little bit more the importance of consumer voice into health plan operations. About 8% of our staff live with HIV uh, and we have a history of strong uh, public-private partnerships. Um, and we have plans to expand uh, beyond New York City. Uh, but rising drug costs are uh, one of the barriers that prohibit uh, resources uh, to actually execute on that expansion. About 90% of our uh, members live with HIV and other uh, comorbidities, diabetes, hypertension, hep C, uh, serious mental illness, substance use disorders, and cancers among the top uh, uh, frequency. About 25% of our members are co-infected with HIV, and I'll spend some uh, time talking uh, uh, about our efforts to address that as well. About a thousand of the members are persons who are HIV negative but who have uh, higher HIV risk, which brings in the issue around access to PrEP or uh, Truvada. So <clears throat> for us, uh, really, uh, the model is predicated on guaranteeing access to life saving. Uh, and quality of life uh, medications. And basically, our health plan hypothesis, again, started by providers, was if you maximized access uh, to uh, medications for chronic conditions and provided adherence support, you could actually drive positive health outcomes that actually created a net lowering of costs. Um, ARVs to treat uh, HIV. Uh, and help people become virally suppressed. Some of you may be aware of the U equals U campaign, undetectable equals untransmittable. Um, hepatitis C meds, uh, PrEP pre-exposure prophylaxis, uh, or Truvada, to significantly reduce uh, the risk of acquiring HIV, hormone therapy, as well as meds for depression, anxiety, uh, pain, and uh, serious mental illness. What we developed was a, a model of care that included integrated care teams, uh, not only nurses uh, and behavioral health workers, but also health navigators, outreach workers to locate persons who are receiving medications but out of care or not filling them uh, as prescribed, uh, and housing uh, specialists to ensure that people uh, uh, ad that we address the social determinants of health, most notably housing security, uh, housing stability, and food security. We also have developed an in-house pharmacy team to facilitate access to essential medications and also provide the wraparound treatment adherence support that, quite frankly, uh, we could not purchase uh, in the marketplace uh, through PBMs. So again, the hypothesis provide access, wrap around support. Um, you could actually lower, uh, increase health outcomes and lower costs. So what are some of uh, the outcomes that we've been able to uh, produce with this uh, subpopulation? 94% of our members are in regular outpatient care and services. And in fact, when they drop out, 
when utilization of those uh, visits goes down uh, noticeably or a provider calls us to say one of our members, their patients, has missed two or three appointments, we actually go out and knock on the door. I actually have a, a team of outreach workers, community health outreach workers, that actually go out and knock on the door. Um, when we first did this, uh, health plan members were skeptical. skeptical. Uh, we knock on the door and people would say, yeah, who are you? So we're here from your health plan. Really? Why are you here? Well, we're here because you're not getting care and you're not filling your medications. And people assumed that we were not the health plan, but that we were someone, uh, someone else who was coming for a, a bad reason. And when we uh, persisted in the communication, people uh, really got the point. They said, you mean you're, you're from my health plan and you're here because you're not spending money on me. And that is the thing that keeps me up at night is as a, a Medicaid special needs health plan leader is I worry about the people for whom we are not spending money on because I know that those individuals will end up in the uh, emergency room and get admitted. 90% of our members are uh, filling essential uh, medications on a regular basis. We've increased viral load suppression from 60% among the patient population in 2006 to over 80%. Viral suppression means the amount of the HIV that's active in the bloodstream um, is so low uh, that it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to transmit the virus. We have cured hepatitis C for over 1,100 uh, of our members. And 25% of our uh, HIV negative members have access to uh, PrEP or Truvada for prevention. So what happened to costs? Between 2008 and 2016, we reduced, successfully reduced uh, avoidable hospitalizations by over 70%. We reduced the length of stay when someone is hospitalized by over 35% and declined uh, in ER visits, uh, topped 50%. In the aggregate, that resulted in $150 million in Medicaid cost savings to the New York State uh, Medicaid program. <clears throat> so during 1990 and 2011, shifting to uh, HIV uh, co-infection with hep C, HIV-related deaths actually decreased by 60%, yet uh, hepatitis C-related deaths increased by 46%. So a critical need to zero in on uh, HCV co-infection. Um, by 2011, uh, hepatitis C was the leading cause of death for persons living with HIV uh, in the United States. At that time, funding was limited, treatment was uh, li limited, and there was really no safety net uh, access uh, to ensure treatment. By 2015, Amedicare had advocated for stage one access uh, to hepatitis C treatment, non-interferon-based uh, uh, treatment for co-infected individuals. And we led that effort and that fight to ensure uh, access uh, for our members co-infected with hepatitis C. Uh, again, I've said uh, we treated over, uh, actually about 1,200 individuals were approved for treatment. Um, a little over 1,100 of those individuals uh, actually began and completed treatment. Uh, the new direct acting antivirals uh, uh, were approved in 2011. Um, and then the new, more potent uh, DAA, Harvoni, uh, was made uh, available in the fourth quarter of 2014. The cost of those drugs uh, between $95,000 and $160,000 for course of treatment, but the high potential uh, for cure. Now, many um, managed care organizations uh, took the route of placing a significant prior authorization criteria, specialty prescribers only in the case where there was significant liver disease or stage three treatment, uh, no history of substance use disorders, or one course of treatment per lifetime. 
And uh, Medicare uh, rejected uh, those restrictions and supported for full access. And part of the rationale for this was, would we hold antibiotics or ART from uh, individuals with substance use disorders? Of course not. Uh, and so uh, we began the process of uh, treating uh, and curing uh, over 1,100 uh, individuals. And I would assert to you uh, that that treatment uh, of hepatitis C is part of uh, the, the total story about reducing uh, high cost uh, medical costs for chronically ill populations in Medicaid. As more uh, members uh, were cured initially, then there was a decreasing need for treatment uh, downstream. Uh, the cost per treatment is decreasing. Uh, fewer members in our population uh, are treated because of, uh, have been treated and the cures, we have a zero reinfection rate among those 1,100 members. We're proud of that. Um, Drug companies competing for preferred formulary status uh, has also contributed to reductions in the cost per treatment um, from 95,000 in 2015 to nearly 25,000 by uh, 2019. The individuals who are not completing, uh, uh, are not being treated, uh, those patient populations often challenged uh, by severe mental illness uh, substance use disorders combined with housing instability uh, that actually is limiting people's ability to even pick up medications. Um, so our hepatitis C uh, program and our pharmacy management program has actually documented about $5 million per year uh, in reduction of unnecessary uh, drug costs. So shifting to antiretrovirals, so HIV medications. Single tablet regimens are available, they're better tolerated, they're simpler, um, and they've contributed to improved uh, adherence and an increase in viral load suppression. Um, and uh, what you see, though, is that there are uh, increasing year-over-year -year ingredient costs uh, and so uh, we do have to deal with the rising costs of HIV treatment. But what are the outcomes if you actually pay attention and ensure that people um, get the drugs? And in this context, I want to say is that treatment of chronic conditions is not just about pills and doctor visits. It's actually about the delivery system um, and support for individuals. What this graph shows is uh, two cohorts of members, uh, members needing targeted case management services, uh, the green line, and uh, members not needing targeted case management, so wraparound uh, support, care coordination support. And what we actually did is we looked at uh, these two groups uh, of members, and so the provision of targeted case management along with these high-cost specialty drugs. What we actually found was that in the initial period, the persons who needed targeted case management had half as strong of an immune system as the average member in our health plan. More active HIV virus, lower uh, helper T cells uh, in terms of the immune system. And what we were able to actually document was regardless of the type of targeted case management that they received, whether it was short-term, low intensity to uh, long-term, high intensity, that within four months of completing a targeted case management uh, protocol of support, uh, the immune system actually uh, reconstituted on par with the average immune system response in the plan. That's critically important because that's part of the story about reducing total costs by reducing uh, the reliance on uh, facility-based care. So what about PrEP? PrEP is uh, for uh, Truvada prevents HIV. It's 90% uh, effective. About 25% of our members are accessing that 
um, the cost uh, could be $1,000 on a PM-PM basis. So why would a plan want to spend $1,000 on a PM-PM basis for PrEP? Well, preventing one case of HIV can save as much as $500,000 in lifetime medical costs, and quite frankly, it's impossible to end the epidemic without a, a significant uptake of PrEP within the Medicaid program, not only in New York, but across the country. Last thing, uh, two th last points. One is that we engage our members uh, extensively around pharmacy costs and medications. Uh, we have a member advisory council, 35 members of the plan advise us uh, around what's happening out in the community, particularly things about fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, two members of that uh, MAC participate in the board of directors. We have two to three town hall meetings a year, uh, including a pharmacy-focused town hall meeting with members uh, every year, focus groups, uh, 100 to 200 complaints and satisfaction surveys to help us understand what members are dealing with so that we can prevent fraud um, and support uh, our folks in dealing with social determinants of health. On the financing issue, um, we uh, are uh, our life is contingent upon the adequacy of Medicaid rates to make access to specialty drugs available. And quite frankly, the pressures on MCOs are actually to offset increased pharmacy costs by a reduction in facility-based care. Um, our state, uh, congratulations and thank you to New York State Medicaid that negotiated uh, as, uh, HIV drugs uh, rebates directly with the manufacturers. Um, a really expanding access paid for uh, by those rebates. And HIV drugs are uh, covered by the, re the rebates regardless of whether they were for treatment uh, or prevention. Um, when the state does not initiate state-based results, then we as a plan would pursue supplemental uh, plan-based rebates, which is what we did on the hepatitis C medications through uh, our PBM. And I guess the last thing I would comment on is that I think there's a value uh, in particularly government pro programs exploring a cost of cure approach to financing of, uh, of drugs, hep C being a good example, where you could actually look at uh, strategies where large-scale access could be paid for over time. Uh, meaning you could actually cover the cost of increased access uh, by the offsets to uh, costs on facility-based care. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much, Doug.